the flames were almost like blowing up to the sky um, because of the way that the wind was blowing and it was just red. It just looked like a sea of red and the second you just see red you know. Yeah, it's hard to see them and see what was. That looking at the trees is really the horror of that day. It's it's not as easy as people think. It's not greener on the other side. I'll tell you that right now because I know everybody that day that experienced this, whether they had to come back to the sub subdivision once it reopened again, or they're moving back in now, I know that we are all struggling to process this a year later. I guess I, uh, yeah, I, I, I put a happy face on and did what I thought I had to do, you know, which was, you know, make the house for my family and whatnot. And, you know, but on the inside, I guess I was struggling more. I wasn't talking the way I should have been. I should have been talking with my wife, but I wasn't. And not even realizing that I was going down a, you know, fairly dark hole, um, you know, when I hit rock bottom and, uh, you know, everything escalated to that point. And, then I realized I had to change, uh, you know, for my family, for myself. Through all this, we, we all just did what we had to do. I started packing up and I was, went out and FaceTimed my friends and I said, look at the sky, it's so red and it's so smoky, I have to go back inside. And all of a sudden, when I was packing in my closet, I could hear a water bomber. And that's still like the biggest thing that I think probably saved me getting out of my house that day before things happened, it sounded like a bomb um, in my closet. And I thought, that's close. Five minutes after I left my driveway, my alarm said that my house was on fire. Um, you know, I stood at the top of my driveway and uh, there was nothing I could do. And uh, it was pretty helpless, very helpless feeling. At that time, I had to push that aside, right? And because uh, there was other places that, you know, could be saved. So, you know, our fire department and our chief, our chief did a, just an unbelievable job at uh, directing um, everybody where they need to go. And, um, you know, as a fire department, you, you had to pick and choose. You know, we, we saved, saved what we could, you know. Um, unfortunately, my house just wasn't one that we could. I was stuck in traffic on Sylvania because we all were. We were trying to get out. No one was moving. It was still. Um, I got a notification on my phone and it said, it said fire detected in your home. It said that the windows had shattered. So it just, just the trauma of leaving the house alone, let alone losing the house. And then finding out that we lost the house too. Like, I can't even describe. My people say they called me that day. I don't remember them calling me as I was sitting in traffic saying, like sobbing, screaming, saying my house is gone. We can't get out. We went to Fall River. My brother lives in Fall River. Um, I went straight to his house and my brother said, I don't think we can stay here either. I think we need to go. Cause there was a fire in Fall River you don't think it's going to happen to me and it happened. So you just never know if you can feel safe, especially since we didn't have any warning. Everything, all those motions come back. You know, you remember things that were said on the radio and drive by that place and you see, I mean, the bridge is gone and, you know, the other houses and hearing everybody's stories that, you know, what everybody's going through, um, trying to rebuild. You know, I dealt with things in a way that was very unhealthy um, and, uh, you know, almost cost me you know, more than, you know, it almost cost me my family, right? So, um, my two girls and, and my wife is what kept me, you know, is what's keeping me going now. I, once we found out when we might be back in our home, I immediately started therapy because I knew the closer we got to coming back here, the closer and the more I started to, my body was processing the trauma there was a dark cloud over this house that we were building for the longest time, but just recently over the last couple of weeks, 
I do, there's, there's a light over this house now for me to know that there's hope. People think it's so wonderful you're getting a new house like out of this and I don't think they realize when I come back I'm coming back to everything that happened that day and I'm coming back to not having my home or my things that were really near and dear to me and our family. Unrealistically I could have never gotten any of our Christmas ornaments. Christmas for us is very sentimental. It's ornaments handed down through the years. It's my kid's whole childhood was on that tree. And I think it's really just the things that I couldn't, could never replace. And that's what I regret not taking the most. It's always emotional to come down and uh, see what's been done, you know, that day or whatever. And if you take a few days and go somewhere and come back and there's some more stuff done, it's, it's good. And to see, you know, you can see behind me everybody, you know, when everybody's here working, it's, it's, a, it's a really good feeling. This land goes back to the early 1700s um, for my family, the Domingues family. It was a no-brainer to build back here, obviously. Well, you know, that's the, the first question a lot of people ask is, you know, are you going to build back? And, well, yeah. Like I said, it's crispy on the sides, but, you know, the main part is still the same, right? This land means more than, you know, it means a lot to me to be able to, you know, to be able to live here and, you know, smell the salt air in the morning.